Okay, so picture this. You're standing on this like rugged coastline in Northern Ireland mm -hmm. and the waves are just like crashing all around you, right? Yeah. And then bam, you see this path wow. made entirely of stone columns just like leading right into the ocean. It's a maze. It's the giant's causeway. And you know, some say it was actually built by a giant. Right. Crazy, right? Really? It really makes you wonder. But could like nature really create something that unbelievable? It's a great question. People have been asking that for centuries. I bet. So today we're going deep, deep into this UNESCO World Heritage Site. Love it. We've got a visitor's guide, some info from the National Trust website, <laughs> and even some like fun stuff from TripAdvisor and YouTube. Nice. So we're really getting the full picture. The full picture. We're not just here to like sightsee. Yeah. We're going to uncover the science, the stories, maybe even some secrets of this place. I'm excited. By the end, you'll practically be an expert yourself. <laughs> well, I might have a slight head start there. Oh, uh, maybe just a little. So first things first. What exactly is the Giant's Causeway, and what makes it so special? All right, so imagine this. You're on the northeastern coast of County Antrim in Northern Ireland. Okay. About an hour's drive from Belfast. Yeah. And you're not going to find, like, sandy beaches or those dramatic cliffs. Right. No, here you'll be greeted by thousands upon thousands mm -hmm. of these interlocking basalt columns. Whoa. Wait, how many are we talking about here? About 40,000. 40,000? Oh, my gosh. That's... Yeah. It's hard to even picture that. And they're mostly hexagonal, you know, like a six-sided shape. Yeah, yeah. Fitting together like um, a giant jigsaw puzzle. Oh, wow. It's no wonder people thought a giant was involved. That's pretty mind-blowing. But you're saying nature created these columns. How is that even possible? So we got to go way back like 50 to 60 million years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. This area was a hotbed of volcanic activity. Volcanoes in Ireland. That's not something you hear every day. Right. So all this molten lava, specifically basalt lava, was flowing across the landscape. And as it cooled and contracted, it started to crack and fracture. Okay. I see where you're going with this. So the lava was like this thick liquid and then... Exactly. Think of it like, um, you know when you make brownies? Uh -huh. And you have that pan of brownie batter cooling on the counter. Yeah, I can see that. It starts to crack as it cools, right? Oh, totally. That's kind of what happened here. But on a massive scale, those cracks went downward, creating these long geometric columns. So these aren't just any rocks. They were formed by this intense volcanic activity. That's it. It's called columnar jointing. Columnar jointing. And the giant's causeway. It's one of the most amazing examples of it in the world. It's like a giant science experiment. Right. It's the sheer scale of it and the, like, almost perfect shapes of the columns, too. Yeah. Some are towering high above you, while others are, like, stepping stones into the sea. It sounds incredible. You really have to see it to believe it. Okay, now I'm really starting to see why people thought a giant had a hand in this. Yeah, I, I get it. It seems too perfect, too organized, you know? Oh, it's wild. But the science behind it, that's pretty fascinating, too. Totally. Even though we know how it formed... There's still this mystery. Oh, definitely. And a sense of wonder about it, just seeing how huge and beautiful it is. Right. So maybe it's not about giant versus nature. Yeah. Maybe science and myth can both be part of the story. Exactly. It's what makes the Giant's Causeway so special. So special. But speaking of giants, we can't talk about this place without mentioning a certain someone. You mean Finn McCool. The one and only. The legend of Finn McCool and the Giant's Causeway. They just go together, don't they? Oh, absolutely. You can't have one without the other. Mm -hmm. Finn McCool, yeah, his story is like so connected to the Giant's Causeway. Right. It's hard to even separate them. So tell me, what's the story? Did he really build this crazy landscape? Okay, so legend has it, Finn McCool, he was this mighty Irish giant. Okay. And, you know, he had this big rivalry. Oh, I bet. With another giant over in Scotland. <laughs> yeah. Classic giant rivalry. I'm hooked already. So... Finn, being all powerful and stuff, yeah, he decided to build this, like, causeway. Okay. A path of stepping stones across the sea. Wait, across the sea? Yeah, to challenge Benandiner to a fight. Hold on, he built the giant's causeway just to pick a fight with this other giant. Pretty much. Talk about an elaborate way to <laughs> settle a score. Right. But here's where it gets funny. Finn's wife, Una. Okay. She realized Benandiner was way bigger and scarier than Finn. Oh. So she disguised Finn as a baby. She dressed him up as a baby? Yep. That's amazing. So Benandiner, he shows up all ready to fight. Yeah. And he sees this giant baby. I'm trying to picture this. A giant baby. Right. And he thinks, 
if the baby's this big, the dad must be enormous. He must have been terrified. He was. Ran back to Scotland, like destroying the causeway so Finn couldn't follow him. So basically, Finn's wife, she's the real hero here. You could say that. Outsmarted the Scottish giant, saved her husband. And accidentally created the giant's causeway. Yeah. Exactly. Classic story of brains over brawn. It makes the giant's causeway even more magical, knowing there's this whole legend. I know, right? Behind it just adds another layer to the experience. It shows how powerful our imaginations are. Definitely. We try to explain things, make up stories. We love stories. Especially for things we don't understand. Yeah, and those stories, they make things even more meaningful, don't they? Totally. But let's be real, not everyone who visits is there for the legends or the geology. True. Some people just want to see how beautiful it is. And it's stunning. It's a full-on sensory experience. What do you mean? You've got the coast, the waves crashing, the columns against all that greenery. So it's not just about the columns themselves. It's the whole package. A right. feast for the eyes. So if I'm planning a visit, what should I expect? Okay, so good news. Access to the outdoor areas is free. Awesome. But there's a fee to park at the visitor center. Okay, makes sense. Is the visitor center worth checking out? Oh, totally. It's really modern. They've got interactive exhibits. You can learn about how the causeway formed. And audio guides, too, in different languages. So you can go at your own pace. Perfect for those who want to, like, really dive into the detail. Exactly. And, of course, there's the usual, you know. The gift shop. Yeah, the gift shop, a what? cafe. You gotta get a souvenir. Of course. Yeah. And you can even book guided tours. Oh, nice. So you mentioned the coastline before. Yeah. Does that mean I should pack my hiking boots? <laughs> Good idea. The ground could be a bit rough. Okay. You'll want to be comfortable while exploring. Good point. And what about the weather? Is Northern Ireland sunny all the time? Let's just say Irish weather is, well, unpredictable. So be prepared for anything. Definitely. Bring layers and a waterproof jacket is a must no matter when you go. Noted. So dress for adventure. Always a good idea. What are the must-sees at the Giant's Causeway? The highlights. Well, you can't miss the Grand Causeway. Okay. It's where most of the famous columns are, forming that path into the sea. That's the one you always see in pictures, right? That very one. Then there's the organ. The columns are shaped like organ pipes. The organ. Interesting. It's amazing how precise nature can be. Adding it to the list. What else? If you like a little thrill, there are the chimney stacks. Okay. Tall, skinny columns standing out against the ocean. I bet the view from there is amazing. Yeah, it's breathtaking. Is there anything else I shouldn't miss? For a bit of fun, check out the giant's boot. A giant's boot? It's a rock formation shaped like, well, a giant boot. That's hilarious. I have to see that. And lastly, the wishing chair. It's a natural rock seat overlooking the causeway. Perfect for taking it all in. And maybe making a wish. A wish, of course. But there's more to the giant's causeway than just those columns, right? Oh, yeah. The area around it is just as beautiful. Really? It's officially an area of outstanding natural beauty. Wow, that sounds impressive. It is. Tell me, what other natural wonders are hiding in this part of Northern Ireland? Well, the coast is amazing. Rugged cliffs, hidden coves. That sounds peaceful. And sea stacks rising from the waves. Wow. The landscape changes constantly with the light and tides. It sounds so dynamic. It really is. What about wildlife? Any cool animals to spot? That's what I was going to ask. You might see seals basking on the rocks, maybe dolphins. Dolphins, wow. Or even whales if you're lucky. This is sounding like a nature lover's dream. It is. And for bird watchers, this place is amazing. What kind of birds? The cliffs are home to all sorts of seabirds like puffins, guillemots. I love puffins. They're so cute. And razorbills, kitty wakes. So many. Geology, mythology, amazing scenery, tons of wildlife. Yeah, it's got it all. Is there anything this place doesn't have? Well, maybe not tropical beaches. True. But it's got a different kind of charm. I can imagine. But a trip to the Giant's Causeway isn't just about nature, right? No way. There's a whole cultural experience waiting to be discovered. Absolutely. The Causeway Coast is steeped in history and culture. I can only imagine. Tell me more. Well, just a short drive away is the village of Bushmills. Okay. Home to the oldest licensed whiskey distillery in the world. The oldest in the world. I'm adding that to my list. You won't be disappointed. Mm -hmm. And if you like medieval history, yeah. there's Dunluce Castle, a ruined castle right on a cliff top overlooking the sea. That sounds incredible, like something out of a movie. It really is. <laughs> And if you're feeling adventurous... Okay, I'm listening. You could walk across the Karakareed Rope Bridge. A rope bridge? It connects the mainland 
to this tiny island. Oh, wow. The views are spectacular. I'm a little scared of heights, but I might have to try it. It's worth it. Okay, so we've got whiskey, castles, rope bridges. Yeah. What else should I add to my list? The Causeway Coast has also become like a pop culture destination. You mean because of Game of Thrones? You got it. Remember those beech trees, the dark hedges? Those are amazing. They're not far from the Giant's Causeway. Okay, cool. And there are a bunch of other filming locations along the coast too. I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan, so this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Right, it's a pilgrimage. So whether you're into history, nature, whiskey, or even Game of Thrones, yeah. the Causeway Coast has something for everyone. It really does. What about for people who want to experience the local culture? Oh, the people in Northern Ireland, they're known for being so welcoming. I love that. And they love to tell stories. You'll find traditional music in the pubs. Oh, fun. Festivals, celebrating local traditions, and lots of chances to hear those great Irish tales. It sounds like the perfect place to experience that Irish charm. It is. And no trip to Northern Ireland is complete without the food. The food, yes. What should I be trying? Well, you can't go wrong with a hearty Irish stew. Okay, that's a must. Or fresh seafood, especially near the coast. Fresh seafood, yes, please. And of course, the Ulster Fry. What's that? It's a full Irish breakfast. It'll keep you going all day. I'll need that after all that exploring. Mm. And don't forget the soda bread. Oh, absolutely. And for dessert, traditional Irish treats like apple tart. Apple tart, yum. Or Guinness cake. So good. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. So, sights culture, food, we've covered it all. Pretty much. Any other tips for planning a trip? Like when's the best time to visit? The Causeway Coast is beautiful all year round. Okay. But each season has its own vibe. What do you mean? Well, summer from June to August is the most popular. Yeah, I can see why. You get long days perfect for exploring, but it does mean bigger crowds. Crowds aren't always fun. True. Spring and autumn are great too. Okay. Nice weather, a but beam? fewer people more relaxed. I like the sound of that. Yeah, the nice pace. And then there's winter. Winter? Isn't it too cold? It has a special kind of magic, you know? It's quiet, and there's something about seeing the coast in the winter. Yeah, I bet it's stunning. You might even see snow on the causeway. That would be beautiful. But yeah, the days are shorter then. Right, of course. And you'll probably get some rain. So pack a raincoat. Definitely. Mm. But if you don't mind bundling up, winter can be really rewarding. So no matter when you go, the Giant's Causeway is going to be amazing. Absolutely. It captures your imagination. Totally. Reminds you of how powerful nature is. Powerful and beautiful. Exactly. But before we finish up this deep dive, we should talk about how to protect this place. You're right. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is. We have to preserve it for future generations. Exactly. What can visitors do to be responsible tourists? Well, we need to be mindful of our impact on the environment. Yeah. Stay on the paths. Don't litter. Respect the ecosystem. Basically, leave no trace. Leave no trace. I like that. Right. Pack out your trash. Don't disturb anything. Stay on the paths. Simple but important. And bring reusable water bottles and food containers if you can. Good idea. Every little bit helps. Yeah. It's all about respecting this amazing environment. And by doing that, we can make sure the Giants Causeway is around for a long, long time. Exactly. So as we wrap up this part of our deep dive, yeah. it's clear the Giants Causeway is much more than just a bunch of columns. It's a story. It's a mystery. It's a natural wonder. It's where geology, mythology, and human history all come together. I love that. It creates a truly unique experience. And it reminds us that there's still so much to discover in the world. There really is. If we just take the time to look. That's the key. But hold on, there's one more thing. Oh. We've oh. talked about the science, the myths, the visitor experience. Right. But what about the bigger picture? How does the Giants Causeway fit into like the grand scheme of things? That's a great question. Its place in the world, its impact on how we understand our planet. Exactly that deeper significance. I'm intrigued. We'll dive into that and more in the final part of our deep dive. Okay, can't wait. Okay, so we're back and we're ready to finish our deep dive into the Giant's Causeway. It's been quite the journey. It really has. We've explored the myths, the science, what it's like to actually visit. Yeah. But before we go, I'm wondering about something. Okay, what's that? We've talked about how the Causeway makes people feel that sense of wonder, but what about its bigger significance like what's its role in the world ah you're thinking about the deeper meaning exactly you see the giant's causeway it's not just a beautiful place right it's also a window into the past yeah. it shows us the incredible forces that shaped our planet over millions of years so it's more than just like 
a pretty sight. Way more. Geologists come from all over to study it. Really? Yeah, they want to learn about volcanoes, about how those columns formed. So it's like a real-life science lab. The best kind. Mm. It helps us understand how our planet works. So by studying these columns in Ireland, yeah. we can actually learn about events that happened millions of years ago all over the world. That's right. It's like having these clues to a giant puzzle. And the knowledge we get from here mm -hmm. can help us understand similar formations everywhere else. Exactly. And not just the science. The Giant's Causeway has cultural significance, too. I can see that. It's so inspiring. It's been inspiring artists, writers, musicians for centuries. It makes you think about the mysteries of the universe. <laughs> it really does. Our place in it all. And it reminds us about storytelling, you know. Mm. Legend of Finn McCool. Right. Right. It might be a myth, but it shows how we try to understand the world. We crave those explanations. Yeah, we find meaning through stories. And those stories become part of the place, don't they? Absolutely. They add another layer to the whole experience. They do. And it shows how science and myth can both be true in a way. They can coexist. Each one makes the other richer. I like that. So when we think about the Giant's Causeway, yeah. we're not just thinking about rocks and legends. No. We're thinking about our connection to Earth, to history, to imagination itself. That's a beautiful way to put it. It makes you think about time, the power of nature, all those human stories. I have to say, this deep dive has given me a whole new perspective on the Giant's Causeway. Me too. It's not just a place to visit. It's a place to really experience. Feel it. Yeah, to feel its energy, let it spark your imagination. I couldn't agree more. So to everyone listening, if you ever get the chance to see the Giant's Causeway, yeah. don't just take pictures and check it off your list. No. Yeah. Really take it all in, feel the power of the place. Let it amaze you. And you know, you might even come away with your own story to tell. That would be awesome. It would. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the Giant's Causeway. It's been a pleasure. Until next time, keep exploring. Keep wondering and keep those imaginations firing.